Hi, this is Sean Goldermuth. Welcome back to Coding Shorts. Today we're going to dive into View 3.2 and a new feature called Setup Script. This used to be an experimental feature and is now a full-fledged member of the library. Setup Script uses Composition API, but in a way that allows you to write the same code with fewer keystrokes. I'm going to talk about why you might want to use it and why you might not want to use it. Additionally, we're going to be talking about the dollar sign ref experimental feature that comes with setup script. Let's get started. So with Vue finally getting to 3.2, I want to explore some different things that are supported in this new version. I've got a simple view project here and inside the source it does have a couple of pieces like models and a way to get some data and we have some views but we haven't really implemented the views yet in fact if you're looking at your own projects you can see that view is just saying a minimum of 305 but that doesn't mean that you aren't using the latest version so if we open up a console and we did in our project just npm upgrade and this is just to ensure that we're using the latest version of the libraries. And because we're using this at minimum, but use the latest, we can actually go to node modules. Let's go down to view. If we look at the package.json for that, you will see that we're actually using 322, which is the latest version that I'm actually working with. So we can close all that because now we know for sure we're going to be using 3.22. And so let's talk a little bit about some of the changes. The problem with the biggest change is an experimental feature that is now a first class citizen. So let's look at a, a typical single file component like this straight up app view, the main view that we're gonna be showing. And here we just have a simple template and you'll see this very common defined component, creating a structure that shows what its name is, what components are in it. And often you would have things in here like either setup or using the options API to build up your application. Well, there's a new feature called setup that some of you have done. And what it does is it specifies that the script is going to use the composition API, but that it's going to make this a little easier by using what's called this setup. And this is a, a little bit of magic or syntactical sugar to make setting this up a little easier. And we'll see in this older format, in order to bring in components like our book view here, that we'd have to add it to our project. And then, of course, we'll need to import it, right? We could see there. And then we could, of course, come up here and say book view. And that would actually run, assuming book view was working. What happens in the setup, if you haven't played with this before, is that it really wants to get rid of almost all of this. And what it does is it takes whatever is in the scope inside the script tag, and it exposes it as things that the template can work with. And the simplest of these is actually the component. So if we just import the books view here and do nothing else, this is still going to work because this object is a member of that scope and the setup script is going to do the magic of, oh, I can export that. I see it's a component. Therefore, you should be able to create the components from that. And that actually works. Let's look at something more typical, like our actual books view. In this case, I haven't implemented a script section at all. We've got our markup that's just going to show some books and allow you to just quickly check them out. And uh, we're going to be getting this from a service we have here. So if we use a typical scenario here where I want to say script, and I'm going to come down here and pick the composition TS, which is from the tooling to create a typical scenario. And that's where I would have define component brought in. We would use define component to create this object that included a setup. And this the setup, if we had, let's say count equals zero, we'd have to return count as an object in order to use it here in the template. So there's a lot going on here. And in fact, I really like this composition API version of it in that we're in control of a lot of what is happening in this scope. But by adding setup here, we can really simplify this. We can say, and that's it. Because this exists in that scope, it's going to allow us to use it here. So let's do and actually implement this. So I'm going to say const 
books and I'm going to assign it an array of book objects. Now these books are from the models I have. This is actually an interface. Now that I'm using the book here, we can see that TypeScript has said, oh, this is an array of books. Okay, that's cool. But we're also going to want reactiveness. So I'm going to use ref, which is a way in the composition API to say, hey, this is going to be something that I can change on the fly. And so to use this, I'm going to have to say import ref from view. Now, just like we did before, this code should just simply work, right? Because we have a V4 here where it's going through one or more books and everything should be fine. We still have a couple of elements missing, like a checkout method and a cover path. So what we really want to do here is first create a function called checkout. And this is going to take one of those books and I can just say book dot checked out equals true. This is just a very simple version of what we're doing. And I'm going to tell that because we're in TypeScript that this is a book. Right, we have checkout, but we also need to be able to have this cover path, which is a way that I can construct a path. And I can actually get this from my services library. Now, I did the hard work of including it. Now, notice I don't have to both with the checkout or with the cover path. I don't need to return these in any way. They're just going to be available. In fact, it knows in the template that these both exist now. So if we were to run this project, and I'm using Vite or Vite, I'm going to continue to say Vite for a while. But what we're talking about isn't limited to Vite, obviously. Now we can see that this is actually working. We're not getting any errors. But of course, we're not getting the books either. We've defined the books as just an empty array. So we're going to need to have a way of saying unmounted, which again also is from view. This is going to allow me to make a quick arrow function that is called once this has been mounted. And how are we going to do that? We're going to do that by saying the result or response from a method called load books. And I'm going to give it a category for those books. And I'll call this uh, science fiction. The openlibrary.org site has these certain book categories that we can use. And load books is asynchronous. So I need to say wait here. And if the response, so if we actually got values back, then we can go ahead and say books.value equals response. So how has this changed it? Ta-da. It's getting those books. And it's actually going to work. And in fact, as we check these out, it's going to continue to do what it's supposed to do, right? So we have this very simple version of where just what's inside the setup is just the pieces you need to set up for the page. We don't have to worry about creating the function and those sorts of things. So if you're used to the composition API, you may be like, well, what about properties and what about emission and those sorts of things? We can do those as well, but the way they're created is by using a method called define props. And this is going to just going to take an object where you can define those props. And so in our case, we'll say limit as a property and it expects a number. In this case, I'll actually go one bit further and say type is a number. And if this format looks familiar, it's the same thing you would do using the options API or just the simple composition API. Default is 50. And then in this case, we can actually come in here now that we've defined that property and we can use it here to say props dot limit, right? Whatever that property value passed in here, we can use it as the limit. And if we refresh again, you can see we're getting in our case, 50 items. But let's go back to the main app and let's say limit five. This will actually cause a warning because it expects this to be a number and we're defining it with a string. So if we use data binding to actually say bind it to the value of five, that actually works. So let's come back here. And if I refresh again, we're getting our five that we defined in the controller as well. And the last piece similar to this is you can define emits. And what this takes are the names of each of the events that you can fire. And then we can come down here into mounted and just say emit loaded. And that would go ahead and fire that so, so that we could up here actually handle the event itself.
And so now that the setup is a first class citizen, it's no longer experimental, we can actually use this and we can see that this ends up being smaller than we would if we wrote other code. Though having control over this scope still makes me a little nervous about setup because some things like this unmounted call or parts of this that I don't want to necessarily have access to up here are going to be exposed to the template. Maybe it doesn't make that much of a difference longer term as long as I'm not using them. But this idea that every variable I create in here or every function I create in here will be then available to the template makes me a little nervous. You know me, I don't like that much magic. That's one of the reasons why I like the Composition API. But for those of you that want to use it, you can now use it in clear conscience. 3.2 has made this an official design. Now, one of the things about the Composition API that they've added here is being able to do something special with refs. Now, as we saw here, when we needed to apply the value here, we needed to dereference it by calling dot value. And that's how ref works. They've added an experimental feature, which may or may not become fully used in a later version, but it's called dollar sign ref. And the idea here is they're going to do some syntactical sugar to where this dollar sign ref is going to allow me to assign our response directly to it, that that value part goes away. Now, it's not allowing me because I made this const, right? Because the ref itself is no longer const, so I can go ahead and say let here. And in this case, there's no more dot value with the ref, but once you turn it on, you're going to need to specifically enable it, as we can see in this error. So if we come back to the Vite config, or you can also do this in the view CLI and the view.config.js, we can add to the plugins here for Vue, essentially to whether to allow that ref sugar to work or not. And again, this is only going to be required during its experimental use. So that means now that we have that, this dollar sign ref will now just continue to work. We no longer get that error because that continues to work. We're actually saying, here's the books and assigning it directly. And that works. My name is Sean Wildermuth. Thanks for joining me.